It lived along riverbanks and swam in the water. Those first Europeans who saw it called it a water mole, but that name didn't last long. Inside this box is one of the first specimens of platypus ever to be seen outside Australia. It was sent to England in 1798 by Captain John Hunter, the governor of New South Wales. This one small animal would take the scientific world by storm and transform the careers and reputations of some of the leading thinkers of the time. The platypus seemed to be a concoction of different animals, part bird with its bill and part mammal with its furry body. When Charles Darwin first encountered one in the wild, it baffled even him. Surely, he wrote, two distinct creators must have been at work. The task of describing the first platypus specimen fell to naturalist George Shaw, who worked in the Department of Natural History in the British Museum. And he viewed this remarkable specimen with a fair degree of caution. This is a first edition of a journal called A Naturalist Miscellany, which was published a few years after his examination. And it contains not only an article by him, but a nice picture of the animal concerned. And at the end, he says, on a subject so extraordinary as the present, a degree of scepticism is not only pardonable, but laudable. And I ought perhaps to acknowledge that I almost doubt the testimony of my own eyes with respect to the structure of this animal's beak. It's said that Shaw was so determined to make sure that he was not a victim of some elaborate hoax that he actually cut behind the bill to make sure it hadn't been sewn on by some mischievous forger. In the late 18th century, the world was opening up. Travellers were returning from overseas with all kinds of wonders. Among them were specimens of creatures that people had come to think of as being myths, such as mermen and mermaids. These were, of course, hoaxes put together with parts from different animals. So it's understandable that Shaw had doubts about the authenticity of his new furry specimen. Despite his misgivings, he decided to give it a scientific name, Platypus, which means flat-footed. He didn't know, however, that a beetle had already been given this name, and some years later, another taxonomist very properly gave it a new one. Ornithorhynchus, which means bird snout. But platypus is still the name that most people use. <laughs>